well, it's my, I know what I like and I can steer the products and steer the flavours and the oils down the routes that I, where I want it to go, saying that it'll be suitable for the UK market. But um, very much they are the wealth of knowledge on producing the olives and creating what I want out of the olive oil. So you knew what you liked to eat, but you didn't know how to produce one of them, I guess. Is that right? I didn't know how to so How long did it take you from when you bought and got the keys to the villa to when you first started producing olive oil? We bought the property in June and the first harvest came along in the middle of November. Now, so you're talking six months? Yeah, and obviously the estate has been running for generations. Um, it used to be a huge, huge estate that over different generations of one family has been carved up and carved up. And I've got down to 3,000 trees, so over a couple of hundred years to now 3,000 trees, you can imagine how large, how massive the estate was when it was first started um, by literally one of the dons of the area. Um, and so the trees are, are very well established um, when we got there. Through local knowledge, it was very quick very clear to see that they need a lot of work doing to them, they've been quite badly neglected, which can damage the harvest. It won't damage the quality of the olive so much, but it'll damage the, the, the raisin, which is the percentage of oil that you get out of the olive. And uh, we've, we've got a lot of product here to taste today, guys. So when as, as, he starts, as Oliver starts to talk about a lot of the products, I'll come round with the tasting bowls, and I'll try not to eat them before I get to you. But, you know, we've got Italian families who've been making olive oil for generations. You come in, within six months, you made an olive oil that is making the top food critics stand up and go, wow. Yeah, we got it to market. I'd love to say, yeah, yeah, well, that was all me, but uh, it was all our trees, really. Uh, uh, the blending, um, you know, it, it's something that is down, is down to us. The, the, the olives and the, come from some great trees, and very much it's like wine. I, I won't stand here and be able to, to tell you a great deal about wine, but th there are obviously some, some similarities between olives and wine and different varieties of olives and grapes and also the growing conditions which they, which they thrive in. And fortunately enough for us, the, the olive grove where we are is very well established over generations, but also it's in a very unique microclimate. Valley Copper is a very small valley, part of a big valley that slopes down to the Adriatic Sea quite high up compared to the other olive groves around and really tucked tucked into the forest which is a national park which is pretty wild and very very jungle like and um, that microclimate helps us a great deal in being organic um, through all the, the insects and the, that come from the forest that help combat the pests, the natural pests um, but also it's colder at night which helps the olives um, the soil is a very rocky soil where we are in the valley. If you looked at it, you'd be amazed to think they're able to grow there because all you can see on the top when it's been flowers is limestone rock, which draw, again draws its similarities to, to grapes. Um, and it holds in the moisture at night during August when we can have no rain for two, two and a half months at a time over the summer. Any moisture there is at night goes into the soil and it's held there, reflected back over through the limestone rock during the day. So the trees get a very small amount of moisture. So, okay. what, so how many oils have we got in the range now of Valley Copper? Okay, so, so what we do is our, our, I call our standard, our, our everyday oil, which is a Lachino, which comes from our Lachino variety. So we have a Lachino variety olive, which is our, the, the common olive for the area. Um, most of our trees are, are Lachino. Um, we we pick this to create an, an oil that's, I think, more tuned to, to the UK customer. Um, it's an oil where if someone tastes it, they, they can get quite a peppery, get quite a peppery uh, feel on the back of the palate. Um, and it's not as subtle as some of the Boolean oils, some of the Boolean oils are. We try and blend one that's got a bit of a kick to it, a bit of a bite to it. Um, and we recommend that that can hold its own on top of the soup, it can be drizzled on top of the soup, it can be drizzled on top of hot roast meat. It's got a bit of a punch to it, which, which, we, which we like. And, and I also feel that the consumer likes that as well. I think the olive oil market in the UK is obviously still has got a long way to go as far as education goes for the consumer, but I still feel the consumer when they're buying olive oil, they like to taste 
they like to get that taste and, and have a quite a pronounced taste of the olive oil. So this is an everyday oil type thing? Yeah, it's an everyday oil. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about consumers and their understanding of extra virgin versus virgin versus just olive oil. Because I think there's a lot of mis misinterpretation and misunderstanding. But you, you've got the three oils, um, you've got the everyday oils, you've got the... What's different about your, the way you do your lemon oil? Okay, so, so this is our lemon oil and we create this in the traditional manner. Um, as a couple of the local presses in the, our area do. We pick our own lemons, we have a lemon orchard below the house. So when we pick our Coratina olives, we pick them mature. The Coratina is a, is a small olive with a, a, a point at the end of it, just by nature of the shape of this variety. We pick it when it's mature, so when it's fully black, and the, and the flesh inside has gone from being a dark purple to almost a blacky color as well. Um, the Coratina olive is, is quite a spicy, picante olive um, and we feel that goes best with our lemons. So on the same day we pick the olives, we also pick lemons from the lemon orchard and we take the olives to the press within, well, that, normally that evening, um, within a few hours of them being pressed, we take the lemons as well. And then it's a manic time of cutting fingers and wielding knives. Sounds a terrible life, doesn't it? In the olive grove, <laughs> picking olives, picking lemons, in the sunshine, two and a half months without rain, on a hundred acre estate. Carry on. So we, so we pick the lemons, we take the lemons down to the press with the olives. With a big knife, we chop, literally just chop the lemons, and chuck them in the press. So there is a, a, some percentages in there as well, but we throw them in the press with the Coratina olives. Um, and through the extraction process, First of all, they're, they're mashed up by the millstones, and then the oil is, is extracted from both the lemons and the, and the olives themselves. At the same time? At the same time, yeah. And then it blends naturally and comes out the other end, um, all, all as one. But the oil from the lemon comes out from the zest of the lemon. So all of the, the, the watery juice is a byproduct. And it takes out just that essential oil from the, from the zest. Is, this, is that why it's darker? I, that might, that's probably more to do with the variety of, of olive. Uh, Olive's going to carry on top. I'm just going to start to walk around and get a couple of you to taste the uh, standard Lachino olive oil, the everyday one. So, all, all of our oils are single estate. Uh, the, the olives um, come just from our own, just from our own olive grove, which is the, our, our, our big selling point, really. And so many olive oils now are mass blended, and they can come from thousands if not hundreds of thousands of different estates and the olives have been treated and treated in various different ways and they all end up in one big fat. Some commercial producers from olive oil can then actually take away completely the flavour of the olive oil and introduce a new flavour to the olive oil and then bottle it and then sell it on mass. So I don't really feel that enough has been done to educate the consumer about what is a single estate olive oil and the way that you know I see our olives grow from the bud to the flower around Easter time. Um, I see them then develop into the olive. I pick them, I press them. We make sure that they're not bruised or damaged on the way to the mill. Make sure they're pressed straight away. All these things can affect the flavor and the quality of the olive. Um, and, then it's, and then it's stored and bottled. So we do uh, our standard Lachino oil. A lemon oil, which I think is coming around at the moment. Um, we do our organic oil, which is a blend of an oleorola and a lachino olive. This is the this is the only blend we do, which is specifically organic. Um, we it is it's fully certified organic um, by IAM, which is the Italian um, body. These olives come from a, an area which is furthest away from our neighbours and. This is the one that we can bottle and blend and with full confidence that nothing has drifted over the fence from, from anywhere else. So, although essentially we don't use any chemicals or any unnatural fertilizers on any of or any of the oils, this one is the one that we fully certify and we market and sell as, as organic. So you've uh, established yourself as a bit of a good olive oil producer and now you start to branch out into other ranges within the brand. And That's right. Pasties. Are, are these recipes that you've developed and created yourselves? We've, I'd love to say yes, but we've, we've worked with some local families who have been making these recipes for generations and becoming 
the sort of celebrities in the area for being the crazy English couple who, who, who've come to live and, and produce olive oil. We've got to know an awful lot of people, an awful lot of people who are making some just fantastic, simple, fantastic foods in Puglia. Making foods using just the most basic ingredients, but the, the best ingredients. I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but in, in Puglia and around the northern Puglia, around the Daunia region, is where almost all of the tomatoes come from that go into all of the pasta sauces um, and pestos and all the, all the concentrated tomato sauces come from the Puglia area. Um, and if you're driving around around our house in September, you, you'll be passing huge trucks full of freshly picked tomatoes. But if you've got the window down, the smell hits you of a tomato smell, which you forget exists when you live in the UK and you're wandering around a supermarket aisle. But that smell of tomato is such a fantastic smell. Not only that, but courgettes and artichokes are, uh, thrive in Puglia and in that, in that area. Um, and so. We've been working with local families to, to get that jar and being English and having the background in sales and marketing. So proper small producers that have been making these products or these kind of products for years and generations and now you've worked with them to bring these their, their fabulous recipes to market. Exactly. So what have we got here then? Okay, so we've got a, three different vegetable pâtés. We've got a sun-dried tomato pâté, which has also got garlic and parsley in it. Um, it's essentially a, a puree version of our sun-dried tomato. We also do sun-dried tomatoes, um, which are locally picked, layered in a jar with our olive oil and flat leaf parsley. So we've pureed that to make a very, very intense flavoured pâté.